Uh, when uh, we last saw you after the fight in uh, New Jersey, I don't really think this is what you had in mind necessarily, but you know, five weeks later, what, what brought this about? I, I th you know, the car, I guess uh, 161, the whole car went to crap, and they needed somebody to save it, and they called Roy Nelson. Is there any hesitation on your part? No. I'll fight anybody in the world. What a, I mean, I, I don't know if uh, Stipe is exactly you know, the, the level of opponent that you wanted for your next fight. Was there any, any thought about that saying like, well, I don't know if that's who I want to fight? No, uh, Steve is in the UFC and um, I was told by Dana White that they're the best in the world, so. This is the last fight on that contract. Do you think that if you can win over Stipe that it makes it all the more better for you into negotiations going in? No, I, I think win or lose, I, I, you know, I have fans and fans want to watch me fight and win or lose, I always bring it 100%. Um, I just actually just got the best compliment. Um, he said I remind him of the Mike Tyson era, where you never know what's going to happen with one punch. You say though sometimes that you go in trying to use your wrestling, but it just turns out that the knockout happens. What do you think of Stipe's wrestling and the pedigree that he has there? Uh, you know, I think Stipe went to college with wrestling, and um, and he's you know he's in the UFC, so you definitely have to have some type of wrestling. Um, so I think he has. I mean, he took a. I think every opponent that he's had that he's fought in the UFC, he's taken down. So. Um, definitely Stipe is, you know, a tough wrestler, I think, you know, but we're in the MMA business, so he has to have mixed martial arts. Do you think the fact that he's coming off of a loss and he was previously undefeated makes him any more hungry to come after you and try to get that upset for himself? Um, I think uh, anybody coming off a loss is usually, that's the probably the strongest that they'll ever be is uh, coming off a loss, just off the pure fact that um, he's coming off a loss and I think he's even had nine or, like, a couple months, like, more, longer than a usual you know, like three or four months between fights. So I think he's, you know, it's going to be the best Stipe um, anybody's ever seen. Had you watched him before uh, you got this fight booked? Um, I watch everybody in the UFC. I, I watch every heavyweight from, you, you name every organization out there from, uh, I watch every heavyweight because you never know who, who's coming after you. What were your impressions of him then? I mean, I know he lost his last one, but he's a pretty hype prospect before that. I mean, what did you think of him? Uh, he was undefeated, um, you know, he was in the UFC, so I was like, you know, this boy has to be good. Uh, he's knocked a lot of guys out, you know, he pushes the pace, he takes people down, and he knocks people out, so I I just look at all angles that, you know, he's going to be good at. Also a wrestler and a baseball player, any uh, similarities there with you? Uh, you know, I, I used to play baseball, all, you know, so I, I think it's I think it's kind of the same. It's, you know, good hips from when you got to have baseball, good hand-eye coordination. Um, so I think it just coordinates well with uh, mixed martial arts. What do you think about the way that he kind of uh, chose not to embrace jiu-jitsu and he spoke out about that saying it didn't matter before his last fight? Uh, you know what? I, I have no idea. Uh, usually guys just want uh, it's a good you know plug for uh, you guys in the news you know when they say no you know jiu-jitsu sucks or something like that. It's kind of like Dave Herman saying it or uh, I think it's just a good plug. Going back to the contract stuff, I mean, do you do you want to be in the UFC after this? Is that that's your ultimate goal? My ultimate goal is to be where 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 people want me. That's I think that's the my ultimate goal. I want to be where fans want me. I want to be where uh, management wants me. I want you know at the end of the day, I'm here to you know provide a show for the fans and you know provide for my family. Is there, is there ever a period in the UFC you feel unwanted? You know, with the Dana talk saying you're so effing smart. I mean, it's a little sarcastic. Is it is it serious? Is it back and forth? How do we gauge that? I, you know what? I, it's, it's kind of. I'm. I don't know. It's, it's kind of really hard for me to judge too, because I think, uh, like, we're just like fans, um, and ourselves, because I'm an MMA fan. Like, one thing is one thing. You'll say one thing, and then the other thing you'll say another, and then it's always contradiction. So, I have, I have no. I don't really put anything, you know, anything into it. Well, you basically insinuated that you're taking the Miocic fight to get that last fight off your contract. It was more of you getting in there, taking a guy for a loss, and then being able to renegotiate. I don't think so. I think um, the reason why I got Stipe was because they needed someone to sell out the, uh, the arena. And they put me on it. As soon as they sell, put me on it, it sold out. So, How have the contract talks been going? Do you have something in place if you win this, or is it kind of all up in the air? I don't... 
I have no idea. I I, I, have, I have people for I have I have uh, what's what's that a commercial? I have people for that. <laughs> you stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Exactly. Yeah. I got people for that. So that hasn't been a distraction at all. Cause I mean, it's the first thing Dana talked about when he asked about this fight. He started bringing up. Da the Dana, Dana, would be like, I don't talk about money. I don't talk about money until they kick everybody out and then be like, Well, that guy made no, da, 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 da. that guy. You know, it's like it's that like that would be the contradiction of well, that's their business to tell you. That's their business. What happened with the it, it, It's, it's kind of just, it's, I really, it's one of those things, like, you could be like, um, like a former NFL player and be like, you know what, I made $20 million, but I'm worth $856 million, and because I bring in $2.7 billion or whatever it is, because that's the reason, you know, that's, I think that's where everybody gets kind of mixed up. It's kind of like, you know, when you work for, even on a smaller scale for a business, uh, and, you're getting paid 30 bucks an hour, but you're you're working for them, and you're like an electrician, and they're charging 150 dollars an hour. And you're like, there's 30, you're charging 150. That, that doesn't quite make sense. You know what I mean? So, I think it's, um, and that business is a little bit different than ours because without us, there there is no UFC, and there isn't like if, you know it's like having a rock and roll band. If without the band, you can't have a concert. I'd seen that you'd likened yourself to Barry Sanders of the Detroit Lions in an interview saying that you play in the big game, but you weren't sure if you'd ever get to the big game. What do you think you need to do to really get that title shot? I, you know what? The best way to do it is like to be undisputed heavyweight champion in the world. You have to fight everybody. I think that's really the goal. Instead of fighting everybody like four or five times, you know, I, I think Kane's already fought since he's been champion. He's already fought the same guy twice or two guys twice. So, they, undisputed would be kind of like how uh, GSP has gone through a whole division, and then and then after he's gone through the division, and go okay, we'll go back through it again. That's a, like that's kind of undisputed, not um, where you hit the same guy like three or four times. Like, I mean, the way I look at it, like with the UFC, there's 25 guys. Let's go through all 25 of them, and uh, th that's that's why why our division so so rare is any anyone can win. That's the beauty of I mean, this isn't boxing where, hey, let's set it up for, you know, 30, I can get 30 matches by doing scrubs and then let's do the big one. And then 30 matches and then let's do the big one. It's like once you're in the big, you know, the big league, it's like, uh, it's like football. Um, you know, they'll go 0-16, but then next year win the Super Bowl. Like, it, it just resets every year because it's a rebuilding year. You, you got different things. You got different people in place. You got different coaches. You got different people surrounding you that makes you better. Uh, you got more money to, you know, pay for, you know, things or whatever it is. It's just in our business, anything can happen, and that's what I love about the UFC. And that's why you know, that's why people watch me is because one punch, you never know what's going to happen. I had seen with the Praetorian that they're not allowed to have their gear anymore inside the octagon. What, can you explain what happened with Praetorian? Did they reach out to you because you used to actually wear a lot of their gear? I, uh, you know what, I that would be something that the UFC. You know, they they handle all the sponsorship stuff. You know, like I don't maybe Praetorians doing uh, starting their own uh, MMA organization like Affliction. I don't I don't know. You know, like any any anything that you know takes a business out of its you know element. I think they're in the clothing business, but I think UFC's in the clothing business too. So you're always, in the clothing business, aren't they're, you? They're all they're all about you know stomping out the competition. How about that uh, shirt you sent to Dana from the Speaking of Clothing Lines? Did you get any response from him? Did you guys talk after you sent that to him? I, you know, I haven't seen him since uh, since the uh, UFC 160, but it's it's actually selling very well because yep. a lot of people, you know, think Roy, Roy Nelson's the smartest guy on earth. Is that your idea to make that? I mean, did you just get a kick he, out of what Dana said? He's or? the one that said it. I just thought it was freaking humorous, and... It's the best compliment you know Dana's ever said to me. I mean, we got these like fighter conduct rules and like what you're what we're allowed to say. Uh, I think the president and like Lorenzo, you know that they represent you know he represents the organization, so they're held to a higher standard. And that was the best compliment anybody can ever say. It's like your parents saying it. Albeit sarcastically, maybe I don't know. You know, I want I do want to talk briefly. Uh, it's my understanding that you're still on your original Ultimate Fighter contract. You just can't let that go. Okay. <laughs> has that has, has that ever become has that ever become has that ever become frustrating for you at any point? No, because I won that. Right. So it's awesome. Hey, Joe.
have one more for you also. Uh, Daniel Cormier, he had said after the conference call comment came out that he had turned down the fight with you, that he was actually not cleared to take a fight at the time. Uh, what would you think about going after Cormier uh, maybe in your next fight after you get a new contract? I think um, the Cormier thing, I think that's that's a little weird since uh, either either Joe Silva or the UFC is retarded and they don't get like a thing of like who's cleared and who's not. Because I wouldn't even bother calling a guy if it was if he wasn't cleared. So I'm assuming they got their ducks in a row, and they called him and said, "Oh, that guy's cleared, so let's call that guy." That's usually like I mean I mean we're we're talking about a billion dollar company. I, I don't think they're that idiotic. How much would you? <laughs> they don't have the smartest guy running it. <laughs> How much would you entertain that fight if uh, they were to make that? Uh, I think if Daniel you know stays at heavyweight, I mean I'll. I'm like Daniel. I'll fight him. He'll be my last fight at, two, uh, at heavyweight. My last fight, because it would be his last fight at heavyweight, too. So that's what he's saying. So I want it to be my last fight at heavyweight, too. So you're going to go to 205 or? 185. That's what I heard I can get down to. <laughs> Maybe 170. I want to try. I'm trying for that pound for pound championship. Maybe beat up a riot favorite at 135. <laughs> You got a birthday coming up right after the uh, fight. What are your plans? My plan is actually um, I'm going to be going to Oklahoma and cornering uh, King Mo um, out in Bellator. Um, and hopefully celebrate uh, two wins, my win and then his win. We heard you talk a lot about becoming a father, I guess, a few months ago before you fought. But now, uh, I mean, we, we all met uh, Jackson today. He's here around. What, what's it been like, I mean, uh, I guess, starting a family and having your son around for stuff like this? I, I think the, the best thing about having Jackson around um, and just having, ki you know, your, your kid and your, or your, even your, you know, your wife or your significant other or um, it's it just puts everything in, all in perspective of what's important, like what's going to be here 40 years from now not what's going to be here a year from now, two years from now. Like, it, it just puts everything in perspective on what you do and why you do it.